Oh, hey everybody. I'm Joshua Oro, the Mustang Prince, and welcome to Mustang Prince Oral Reports. Now, today, I've been going through a few of my high school yearbooks, which may remind you, I keep on my bookshelf behind me. And also, I gotta tell you, I really miss the good old days having classes with some really good people. And I really miss them more these days while being stuck under lockdown all alone for an entire year. Plus, I really wish that my high school reunion wasn't canceled back in 2019, and I hope that my former classmates haven't forgotten about me. Oh, speaking of which, for today's episode, we're going to go back to the Equestria Girls franchise to look at a special, which is the first to come out of the MLP Equestria Girls digital series. So... Airing on Discovery Family on February 17th, 2018, this is My Little Pony Equestria Girl's Forgotten Friendship. Now, let's get started. In this special, during the weekend, Sunset Shimmer discovers that her friend's good memories of her have been mysteriously erased. So, she promptly returns to Equestria, where she reunites with her former mentor, Princess Celestia, and seeks help from Princess Twilight Sparkle to find the cause before the memories vanish forever. So, what do I personally think of this special? Well, to me, despite some mean spirit, this special was absolutely nostalgic and emotional. And to further explain why I enjoyed this special, let's move on to Mustang Notes. Now, from what I can tell, the special is kind of based on a novel titled A Friendship to Remember, which was published on December 5th, 2017. The following month after its airing on Discovery Family, the special was edited down into a 50-minute original cut of five episodes on Hasbro's YouTube channel. The episodes were uploaded from March 9th to April 6th, 2018. Also to note, the special's writer, Nick Compalone, states the special takes place before the 2017 My Little Pony movie. So, I guess it takes place sometime during Season 7, not long after Twilight and her friends brought back Star Swirl the Bearded and the Pillars back from Limbo. As for the animation, well, in my opinion, like the past four movies and the miniseries, the Flash animation is still great, and while the special mostly takes place in the human world, my favorite part is when Sunset goes back to Equestria to get help from Princess Twilight, and I like when she and Princess Celestia make amends. However, to me, the scene at the beach was very mean-spirited and harsh when the girls act hostile around Sunset. Also, I thought the final climax in the parking lot really showed true Mustang power. Now let's talk about a very important object in this movie, the Memory Stone. Now, this is a very ancient equestrian artifact with the ability to erase any memory from any individual. The user can either point the stone at a target or focus the stone's power to affect multiple targets in the surrounding area. The stone can also be focused on specific fragments of memories, leaving a blank spot of what the fragment was. If any memory is erased for more than three days, then it is erased forever. Legend has it that the stone has existed before the founding of Equestria. It was once in the possession of an evil sorceress who used the stone's power to make herself invincible. However, she was opposed by Clover the Clever, who sought to stop the rampage and destroy the stone. Whenever Clover got close to her, the sorceress would use the stone to wipe out his memories of the events and escape. But, luckily, he was able to outwit her by writing down the events before she'd done so. Eventually, he managed to subdue the sorceress and confiscate the stone from her, but was unfortunately unable to destroy it or restore the memories that are taken three days prior. To prevent the stone from ever falling into the wrong hooves again, 
Clover traveled to an alternate dimension and buried the stone among a strange rock formation. Now let's move on to the two songs featured in this special. First is We've Come So Far, sung by Sunset Shimmer and the Equestria Girls. In this song, Sunset sings about the friendships that she has made since reforming while working on the school yearbook with the girls. In my eyes, this is my favorite song in the entire special, and in my eyes, this song brings back a lot of fond memories from the past four movies, mainly due to the lyrics and the flashback clips. And I like when Sunset takes photos around the school. Next is the villain song, Invisible, sung by Wallflower Blush, while expressing about her high school experiences as a shy and ignored loner. In my eyes, this song has a catchy 70s style beat to it, but at the same time, it's very sympathetic. Also, while listening to this song, it almost makes me think of Pinkie Pie's Lament song, in a way. Also to note, while the cover sung in the special may last for about a minute and 30 seconds, according to co-director Katrina Hadley, a full extended version of the song does exist. Perhaps on YouTube, I think. Anyway, let's move on to the cast. Our main character, Sunset Shimmer, is voiced once again by Rebecca Soichet, whom I remember as Sota from Inuyasha, and she voiced Jane Porter in the 2017 Netflix series Tarzan and Jane. Now, in my eyes, ever since Princess Twilight defeated her in the first Equestria Girls movie, Sunset has deeply improved as a nice and friendly person, and I like that in this special, Sunset Shimmer is the president of the Canterlot High School Yearbook Committee. But after the rain booms and the rest of her classmates have forgotten that she was nice, Sunset is willing to do anything to get her friends back. Plus, I liked when she sacrificed her own human memories to save her friends. Next we come to Princess Twilight Sparkle, voiced by my all-time favorite voice actress, Tara Strong. Best known from the Powerpuff Girls, Teen Titans, and The Little Mermaid 2 Return to the Sea. Also, she voices Twilight's human counterpart, Psy Twy. Now, in my eyes, while Princess Twilight does not appear as often as she did in the first two Equestria Girls movies, I still think Twilight is adorable and a spunky bookworm. And... I like that she and Sunset have been keeping in touch through their journals. Plus, Twilight is still my number one cartoon crush. Also, I like that Twilight helps Sunset find a solution to get her friend's memories back while browsing through the Canterlot library. As for Psy Twy, well, while she has no more problems with Midnight Sparkle anymore, I still think she's a highly intelligent schoolgirl, and I like that camera drone that she invents for a beach photo. Plus, it also comes in handy for a later scene, which I won't say due to spoilers. Plus, while Sai Twy and the other Rainbooms were mean to Sunset after losing their memories, I did like the part where all seven girls pony up and destroy the memory stone. The rest of the girls are as follows. Rainbow Dash and Applejack, both voiced by Ashley Ball, Pinkie Pie and Fluttershy, both voiced by Andrea Libman, and Rarity, voiced by Tabitha St. Germain. Next we come to Sunset's former tutor, Princess Celestia, voiced by Nicole Oliver, who got to be in the Littlest Pet Shop series, and she was also in 2017's Wonder. Now, in my eyes, Princess Celestia is a beautiful and kind, but sometimes strict ruler of Equestria. Plus, she makes a wonderful mother figure for Twilight, and I absolutely love her sense of humor at times. Plus, she reminds me of my own Princess Celestia, my former special ed elementary school teacher, Francine Callahan. Anyway... In this special, as stated earlier, I absolutely love the part where Celestia, 
reconciles with Sunset. And I also liked when she and Luna show Sunset and Twilight the restricted section of the Canterlot Library, which made Twilight hyperventilate in excitement, which was really cute in my opinion. Next we come to the great and powerful Trixie Lulamoon, voiced by Kathleen Barr. Now, even though her pony counterpart has become friends with Starlight Glimmer, human Trixie is sometimes a very arrogant and obnoxious brat at times. And in this special, Trixie pushes for Sunset Shimmer and her friends on the school book yearbook committee to put her in the yearbook's super latest section as greatest and most powerfulest. Later, Trixie becomes a minor supporting character by helping Sunset solve the mystery of her friend's memories being erased after she is eliminated as a suspect. Also, I liked when Trixie uses her stage magic to get Sunset out of the locked yearbook room. Finally, we come to the villain of the special, Wallflower Blush, voiced by Shannon Chan Kent who's not only known for doing Pinkie Pie's singing voice, but she was also one of the shadow bolts in the Friendship Games movie. Now, Wolfflower is the solo founder of the Canterlot High School Gardening Club. In my eyes, Wolfflower is a quiet and introverted girl who is typically ignored and quickly forgotten by the rest of the student body, instilling her with a feeling of complete invisibility which, to me, makes her a very sympathetic villain. Also, it's revealed that Wallflower found the memory stone buried in the school's garden some time ago, and the reason why she made every one of Sunset's friends forget that she was nice was because she's been resentful towards Sunset for being so popular and constantly ignoring her presence. But her demeanor slowly changes from bitter too remorseful. Plus, I'm glad that Sunset added her gardening club photo to the yearbook. And now let's move on to my final words. Overall, Forgotten Friendship is a pretty decent special to come from the MLP digital series. Sure, the flash animation is great, and I liked how the special centers more on Sunset Shimmer and her improvement as a good friend. Plus, I liked Princess Twilight and Celestia's roles in this special. Trixie was an okay minor supporting character, and the villain Wallflower Blush was pretty sympathetic for being literally invisible. However, the only flaw with this special is the mean-spirited behavior from Sunset's friends. But because it's caused by a memory loss, I can't really blame them either. Also. This special does give us a very important lesson that everybody matters no matter how insignificant and invisible they feel. Also, if you folks are still MLP fans, then be sure to check out this special either on YouTube or on Netflix. As for my rating, I'll give it an 87% out of 100. Well, that's all for now. Be sure to join me next time because I think it's time to look at a sci-fi comedy starring a beloved stop-motion sheep. Mustang Power. (laughs) 